Hello Year 9 and welcome to the first of uh, the lessons on our new electricity and electrical circuits topic. Uh, in this lesson we're going to be looking at electrical current and charge. Okay, so what we're going to look at today um, is current, what is it, how do we model it, how do we measure it and finally how do we calculate it. So hopefully you should already have watched the um, uh, carried out the starter task, which was the worksheet on Padlet, which looks at some of our kind of preconceptions around electricity. What do we know already? What do we think we might know already? So please make sure you've done that before you watch this video. OK, let's move on. So first of all, what is an electric current? OK, so an electric current is the flow or movement of electrical charge. So if we look in any kind of um, wire or me metallic um, metal substance, okay, we have electrons, free floating electrons uh, that are able to move. And in electrical uh, wires such as copper wire, okay, those electrons will be moved away from the negative end to the positive end okay because electrons as we know are have a negative charge so they are repelled away from the negative charges at one end of our battery so our battery that we have in our in any of our normal circuits has a negative end and a positive end and the electrons are pushed away from one end towards the other end OK, in our copper wire. Now, if that copper wire completes a circuit, those electrons will flow around that circuit. So our electric current, which is the first point I'd like you to note down, is that a flow, if electric current is a flow or movement of electrical charge. OK, our second point, our second key thing. OK, which particle moves to cause an electric current? It's an electron. So the movement of an electron is what actually causes electrical current to flow. OK, so that's your second point that I'd like you to take down. OK, our third and final key point is around what happens okay, to increase or decrease the amount of electrical current. So if some, obviously some things will, have, will require more current than others, okay? Or sometimes we have a higher current flowing. And what that's simply down to is the rate of flow of charge, okay? So with a large current on the left here, you can see that there are lots and lots of charges flowing. There's lots of electrons moving. They're not moving faster. There is a lot of them. If we compare that to a small current, there are fewer charges that are flowing. There are fewer, elect fewer electrons moving in that direction. OK, notice that the key thing is that it's not um, that they are moving slowly, that they are. There is more of them. OK, or, f or fewer of them or more of them. OK, let's think about models, circuit models. OK, so here's a very simple circuit that you might be familiar with already. We have a battery or a cell and a bulb. And we're going to look at circuit symbols in more detail in another lesson coming up. But this is a very straightforward circuit that we want to be able to model. We want to understand what's going on. How is current flowing around this circuit? OK, how does it move? What is it represented by? And I'm going to want you to I want you to think about your heating system at home. OK, so um, you've probably got some sort of a system that looks a bit like this. You have a boiler or a pump, maybe in the kitchen or um, hidden in a cupboard somewhere. OK, and that boiler, so that boiler has a pump in it and it pumps, it heats up water and then it pumps that hot water around the pipes in your house to the radiators. OK, those radiators then get warm. And then the water is transferred and pumped back to the boiler to be reheated. So there's a flow of water around the pipes, 
okay and that is controlled by the pump in the boiler so when we're thinking about a circuit we can think about well what are the different components and what are they represented by so I'm just going to add a little bit of information here to help us. I've got the five main components that we're thinking about, the five main things that we're thinking about in our um, circuit at the bottom here. A cell, the wires, the current, the component, and the electrons. And we're just going to think about what is what. So if we think about the cell, the cell provides the energy, provides the boost, provides the push around our circuit. So in our central heating system, we would represent that as the boiler or the pump. OK, so this is the cell. And remember, we're talking about a cell not in a bio biology terms. We're talking about it could also mean a battery. OK. Then let's think about the wires. Now, the wires are the things that carry that flow of charge, that flow of electrons. OK, and in our system, hopefully you've already thought of it. It is our pipes. OK, so in this case, the wires are the pipes. So I'm going to put that just there. Now, what is the current? Now remember, what did we say current was? Current is flow of charge. Okay, current is the actual movement. So what we're thinking about here is current being the flow or movement of water. Okay. Now, what's our component? Our component would be the thing that receives that energy, receives that charge. In this case, the radiator. And then finally, what are our electrons? Our electrons are the little things that carry the charge, and that's going to be the water molecules. OK, so I'm going to write down the water molecules. OK, so hopefully that's nice and clear. So how do we measure current? We measure current using something called an ammeter. So here's our symbol for an ammeter. As I said, we're going to think about circuit symbols in more detail uh, in another lesson. Here's some images of what an ammeter might look like. OK, so these are some pictures of what we might see them with it when we're in the lab. This is how we measure current. OK, so we use an ammeter in series and parallel circuits. Now here is an ammeter here placed in our series circuit, so our single loop. And you can see we've got a bulb and we've got an ammeter. And here is an ammeter placed in a this parallel circuit. There's three bulbs here. And here's our ammeter. So the first independent task that you can do and pause the video to, to do it, is to redraw these circuits, these four circuits, adding an ammeter to measure the current going through the lamp. So where would you put the ammeter in these circuits? So you'd like if you could pause the video and have a go at doing that. OK, how did you get on? Hopefully you put something like this, OK, with the ammeter placed near to the bulb. Have a look how your drawings compare to these ones. OK, let's think now about the relationship between current and charge. OK, so the size of the current, the amount of current there is, is determined by the rate of flow of charge. We've already mentioned that before. OK, the rate of flow of charge, the how, flow, how much flow of electrons there are, will determine how much current there is. So if there's more charge, more electrons flowing through a component, the current is going to be higher. OK. So. Equation. The rest of today is going to be looking at using this equation. So I'd like you to write down this equation. Charge flow, current and time are linked by this equation. 
So there's some weird letters here. A charge flow uses the letter Q. Current uses the letter I. And time uses the letter T, little t. The units of measurement for charge are something called coulombs. Say that to yourself, coulombs. And we use the, the, the unit C. Current is measured in amps with the letter A. And time is measured in seconds, small s. OK, so pause and make sure you've written that down. OK, I'm going to show you a worked example. Uh, for, for, I'm only going to do the first one of these. OK, I'm leaving the second one for you to have a go at using this method. Um, there's a really important method that we do for working through equations. OK, um, so we're going to have a go at a question here. And I'm going to show you how to model this answer. So the question says a charge of 40 C flows through a heater operating for 600 seconds. How much flow, how much current flows through the heater? OK, so I'm going to first of all pick out what information do I know? So the C here is my Q, is my charge flow. OK. Obviously, my 600 is my time, and I'm being asked to find out my current, okay, my amps. So I'm going to write down, I'm going to follow this process of V-E-S-R-A-U, and write down in the table all the bits of information as I go. So first of all, my values. Well, I know that for C, I've got 40. OK, so I've got a charge flow of 40. For T, I've got 600. But for I, I have no information. That's what I'm trying to find out. So I'm going to write down my equation. Now you've got it looking, you should be looking at it at the moment. Q equals I times T. Charge flow equals current times time. Now what I'm going to do is substitute in my values. So what are the values that I know? Well, I know charge flow because that was 40. And I know my time. I don't know my current, but I know my time as being 600. The next stage is to rearrange. I'm going to rearrange my equation to find out I. So hopefully your maths is what you're familiar with here, so you should be dividing both sides by the same to get your I. So we're going to do 40 divided by 600. That will give us an answer. And my answer that I've got on my calculator is 0 0.06. Now, what are my units? Well, I'm looking for current. And I remember my unit for current is amps. So I can just write an A or I can put amps. OK, so there is my worked example. So uh, I'm not going to do the other ones, um, but here is another go. I'd like you to have a go at this following the same process. The one thing I will say for you is that the KC is kilocoulombs. So this is 50 kc equals 50,000 coulombs. Okay, so that's our method for working out uh, current. So your independent tasks are as follows. Okay, uh, there is a practice question sheet um, on the Padlet for you to have a go at. So try out the worked example, follow my method, uh, go back and do that as you're watching the video, and then open the worksheet and have a go at the questions. And those are what your teacher will ask you to submit to Teams. Okay, good luck and I will see you for the next lesson.